Right, so I'm here in London with David Courtney, oh, London yeah, OG. You. Whereabouts were you from originally in London? I'm a South London boy. I'm um, Peckham, Campbell Green, Bermondsey. Yeah. yeah. They say in America, they call it the Black Quarter because they <laughs> separate South London by a river. North London, East London and West London are all on that side of Thames. Yeah. We got all the, we got Brixton, New Cross, Peckham. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're bandit country. <laughs> so you were born into the bandit lifestyle, were I'm you? afraid so, yeah. And how old were you when you like started thinking, this is the way I want to go? Um, personally, I don't think that you, you can start thinking that. I think okay. you're actually born that way. Right. Yeah, you're born naughty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you're not. Or you're, if you're a girl, you're born that you like cock. And it doesn't matter if you married Brad Pitt, you'd still check the chauffeur. You can't help it. You're just that way. And and being born naughty is, is pretty, pretty much the same as that. So yeah, I was born that way. I found it quite natural as a um, natural leader material. Yeah. yeah. I found that the you could still be a, a criminal and laugh a lot because mm -hmm. laughing and the sense of humour was my, was my big thing. Yeah. And. Um, I didn't have to walk around like that till day, mm -hmm. looking angry and um, pissed off. You yeah. know, it, it helped keeping everything light-hearted and... Yeah. What about in school? Did this start to show then? Very much so, yeah. I, I was getting on with all the big kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a little bit of bottle and I was out rubbing cars and factories and uh, doing... You know, I was up for everything to yeah. earn some money. Yeah. And... At 13 and 14, I was most probably earning more than my dad. You know, right. and I was out with the kids earning money. So at school, I never had no trouble because mm -hmm. I hung around with the big kids at night. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And how was that money being earned? Through crime, petty crime at the time. Yeah. Petty crime, yeah. So what were the mean? first crimes that you did then? Well, it was nicking cars and, mm -hmm. and, and um, rubbing factories and shops. And yeah. No, anything that they said, you know, like my mum and dad were scout leaders, mm -hmm. yeah, common scout leaders. So I used to like pretend to I had a sponsored swim. I'd write out all the forms. <laughs> or, uh, we're collecting for the bottle packet in the tin. We're collecting food for the Biafra. You know what I mean? <laughs> and go around there one day and get fifty barrels of food. You know, yeah. I, like, we was all doing all different things, all different things. I was a late starter with the fighting thing. I didn't realise mm -hmm. I was gifted at that until I was much older. What made you realise that? Um, having to actually do it. Yeah. You know, like, like getting coming unstuck one day where there was no way out of it. My jokes weren't helping. I didn't <laughs> have a lot of big friends around me and I had to go and do something. Yeah. And I think it was the fear of getting hurt, hurt. Right. That made me pull something out of the bag that, wow, I didn't actually know I could do that. Yeah. And someone threatened you then? Yeah, it was a, it was a punch up that I was in the in the company of people that mm. this fellow with a big builder's belt on with hammers in it and screwed on looked look the scariest fucking thing in the world. Do you know what I mean? Big muscles and that. Yeah, I was a kid. I think I was fifteen, and he banged out two of the men that I was with, mm. and the turn like, turned on me, and I thought, well, I'm just going to get knocked out, smashed a bit, stabbed it with the hammer, or I've got to at least try. Yeah, and I was very good at it. So, <laughs> but, oh wow. Yeah, that's quite cool. Did it give you a feeling like you enjoyed it? Um, the most Neanderthal feeling in the world is knocking out another man. That's quite natural for anyone to yeah. actually be standing over someone in a boxing mm -hmm. ring while you've knocked him unconscious. Yeah. And having 10,000 people going, die, mate. Right, <laughs> hear me, that is sexual. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And it is the most natural thing in the world. Even gorillas today, they go, Wah! <laughs> yeah you know it's of course you felt good winning yeah yeah because i had a mate growing up called wild man big guy and he was just getting i find that very surprising fights. that you had a mate but carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> when you give drugs away for free you attract a lot of mates yeah. <laughs> and uh he he just had a natural uh, flair for it yeah flair for it that's it yeah yeah, yeah i recognize that in you and, uh, I, and i think yeah. once you've lost a couple of fights yeah and you do actually realise that you can lose a couple of fights and get hurt, but you do actually get better mm -hmm. two months down the line and it doesn't matter and you're all okay. That makes you not frightened of getting hurt. Yeah. And that is mm -hmm. a really big thing in, in, the, in the 
finance world. Yeah. Once you don't mind getting hurt yourself, yeah. Um, it makes you an, a prolific mm -hmm. weapon. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to lose a couple to realise getting knocked out is no big thing. You just a little bit of a sore jaw for the next two or three weeks. Yeah. Or a couple of days. And then you're away again, you know? I've seen yeah. people break their eye socket and all that, and then eight weeks' time, mm. it's all mended, and they're cracking on with it. But once that's happened to you a couple mm. of times, you ain't frightened to get an hurt. That makes you a yeah. much better fighting man, and any boxer will tell you that. Yeah. You learn fuck all from winning a boxing match. <laughs> you know, someone's standing in a corner, and you're going, bam, 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 yeah. bam, bam. You don't learn nothing from that. If you're trapped in the corner and getting pinged out, don't you get mm -hmm. out of there going, I will never get trapped like that again. Yeah. Getting losing is is educational, yeah. And it makes you more confident in life as well in karate. Of course. Doing lineups. I remember the first lineup, you know, all the black belts are waiting, you gotta fight them for like thirty seconds each. Shitting it the first time, broken uh, ribs, cracked ribs, broken fingers, but you lose that fear then of getting hit. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah you gotta get it. So what took it then to the gun level with you? Um, as you got older, when the the big kids that you're hanging around with are, are carrying firearms, yeah, then uh, you know you progress with that. Yeah, you get nicer mm. cars, nicer clothes, nicer weapons, nicer yeah. women, bigger bank balances. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in depending on what walk of life you're in, mm -hmm. everything should go up a level every now and then. So if you're yeah using a stick to hit someone on the head as a kid and you're using a knife later on as a, as a teenager, if you're going to carry on in that way of life, as, as you progress, you, you turn to firearms. And would you say you was addicted to that lifestyle? No, 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 no. It, it's not the lifestyle. It's um, being a criminal is, is just a job. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a job. It's like bricklayers don't come home with a trowel and build brick walls in the front room all day long. And I don't run around the kitchen with a gun going, make me a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, it's tools of the trade on site when you're at work. And when you come home, you're just a bloke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And and crime is the same as going bricklaying. You know, it's a lazy man's way of going to work. You don't have to do eight hours a day for... No taxes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And... It, 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 it force feeds you into a way of life of um, you can spend more, you can go out more because you don't have to get up for work in the morning. You don't have to save up because when you run out of money, you go out and get another load. <laughs> yeah? And and it's different. You've got a different way of life. So Yeah. Um, you, you only, you only, people that are naturally good at that do the things like don't grass you up, don't run away and leave mm. you when you're in trouble. Um, stay loyal to their friends people that just want that way of life but they're not born into it yeah and they pretend to be they're the ones that they go bodybuilding they try and look like gangsters they do that all the time thanks the writers yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and um when it all when when the shit is a fan that's when you can tell how good a person you are in anything especially yeah. the gangster world yeah mm -hmm. the criminal world and when the shit is a fan it's them the ones that go to, yeah. or run away when they've seen him get stabbed him get stabbed and him get stabbed and then they look at you yeah, yeah. they would have be the one run away it wouldn't enter someone like Reel's head mm -hmm. to go I'll grass him up or I'll run away and leave you or yeah you get what I mean so how easy was it for you to get a guns back then I can see it <laughs> but it's, but yeah, it's, very, it's very easy yeah it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> no felonies in here it's a lot easier now <laughs> Yeah. It was quite easy then, depending on what walk of life you're in. Right. Yeah. I, what, what, I could say, what years are we talking when you were first getting into the gun scene? Um, late 80s, early 90s. Okay. You know, when, when the rave scene first kicked in. Then okay. All of a sudden, people are selling ease. Yeah. And whatever doorman was running the club of... Uh, was running the door of a... Of, of a, of a 15,000 strong rave, you know, mm -hmm. you was going home with a couple of hundred grand. Yeah. Well, that's up to your level of violence because that's worth actually robbing you for. Yeah. Coming, doing a takeover bid for, or, mm -hmm. you know, having a little gunfight over who's got the right to sell that in there. That's a lot, a lot of money. We never, no one had ever seen that before. You're used to 80 pound a night as a doorman. Yeah. Now you've got, you've, you've got drug dealers giving you two grand to let them sell the stuff in there tonight. Mm. And you've got 10 of them in there doing that. Yeah. And that's worth fighting for. And if the people that's going to be coming to mm -hmm. 
take over our carrying guns, I'm afraid my knuckle dust is no good anymore. I have to have firearms and I have to have people around me that are prepared to use them, not show it or just get an hard on carrying it. You have to be... It's an arms race. Yeah, 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 for real, yeah. So what attracted you to going into the rave scene? Um, I went to America with Richard Branson and I saw him when it was all acid. Yeah. yeah. What year was that? 89? Oh, like early, no, no, it was earlier than that. Really? And I saw him buying, I saw him buying water. Yeah, the water and that, sales. What is what freaked me out? <laughs> if anyone in my when I was a young man ever went into a pub and went three Ribenas, a Lucas Aid, four <laughs> bottles of water, and an orange juice, it'd get fucking beat up. Yeah? It would get beat up. You had light and bitters, double diamonds, light, whatever. But it'd get beat up. And I saw him yeah. buying fucking water mm. and buying two bottles of water for. Two dollars each and drinking one and tipping the other one on their head. And I'm like, <laughs> is this for fucking real? Right, the toilet ain't even got toilet paper. You don't rent an ashtray in the whole club. It's a railway arch. Yeah. And they're buying fucking water <laughs> off you because they've all had this pill. Yeah. Fuck, I couldn't wait to come home. I bought fucking three quarters of a ton of empty heavy hand bottles. Yeah. Filled them up with water. Got them by railway arch yeah, yeah. at John Ruskin Street. Put them all the water in the fridge and everyone at once, uh, a bottle of water. When you have a bottle of water, they take the top off for you and throw it in a bin. Otherwise, the dance floor would be smothered in bottle tops. Mm -hmm. right? So they didn't know it was just ordinary water out of the tap. And I'm like going fucking three quid for me, three quid for me, like all day long, every day. And, and <laughs> because it was illegal, you stayed up until six. All the clubs shut at half two, three o'clock. Yeah. They've just made me, I can sell water now till six in the fucking morning. <laughs> it comes out of the tap. It comes out of the fucking tap. Right, and they say there's not a God, yeah? And you're not even breaking the law. <laughs> no, it's mental. And the only people you've got to look out for or worry about are in there going, as he... <laughs> I was like, wow. Wow, stop it. So how did you have it structured then? Did you like find the venue, throw parties, do the water? Well, I, 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 the I had a... Uh, um, uh, Maybe one of the biggest teams of doormen in the okay. country at the time. Right. Yeah. Um, there is natural leaders and there is natural soldiers, and yeah. each one is, is is as equally important to the other one. Mm -hmm. Good soldier needs a good leader. Good leader. The problem yeah. comes when soldier gets in charge, or a leader has to be led by someone ain't as good as him. Yes, when it all falls to bits. But yeah. I found my little vocation. I had mm. seven, eight hundred. Big bodybuilding, flat nosed skinheads oh, yeah, working crew, for me. It? Yeah. And I had all the clubs. I had the, had the, the string clubs. fellows, the hippodromes, wow. the Ministry of Sounds. That's the, a lot of power. It, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I was looking at it. I was earning £15 a man per night. Yeah. And on the weekend, I had 800 working. You know, during the yeah. week, I had 400 working. But at the weekend, I was earning 800 15 quid. That adds up, doesn't it? Yeah, without the money, just on the doorman thing. Yeah. And if anyone wants to go and get their neighbour beat up or their daughter's boyfriend beat up for mm -hmm. eating her or the car repossessed or squatters thrown out, yep. they really don't know who to ask. Yeah. But every Friday night, there's a lot of doorman over there and they'd fucking know. So I became a massive big job centre <laughs> for people that wanted their neighbour to be disappeared. Can you get the squatters out of my house? Can you repossess a car? And I had 800 flat nose pieces all waiting to... Yeah. Have you got any other work for me, Dave, apart from Friday and Saturday night? You had so, your own army, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's exactly what it was, yeah. So did you try ecstasy? Yeah, fucking hell, did I? <laughs> I? Did I try ecstasy? Yes. I turned into the best fucking dancing fighter anyone had dancing ever seen. Dancing fighter? I'm fucking telling you. It's not that I was the best fighter in the odd dancer in the world, but I thought I was. I was the first bloke to moonwalk forward. <laughs> yeah, you know. So how long was your run in that scene and what happened next? Oh, wow. Uh, what happened next is it, it made me infamous. Okay. I bought quite a lot of clubs. Yeah. All the doorman worked for me. I then ended up doing the cratering funeral. Wow. Um, I actually thought it was going to be the biggest smart move I've ever done in my life by showing the rest of the world 
my security men. Yeah. And after that, I was going to become a, I was going to become a millionaire mm -hmm. with security jobs. What it actually done is it brought Dave Courtney to the attention mm -hmm. of the police and the polit pol politicians. Yeah. And it was their very first visual proof of organised crime. One criminal mm -hmm. has arranged all of these other criminals yeah. that normally are shooting each other. But on this one day, mm -hmm. he's in charge and got them all coming down here doing the security thing. And criminals are supposed to have their collar up in the shadows, no pictures, no comment. And there we all were for eight so hours. It was a surveillance weapon. Yeah, they just went, what the yeah. fuck is that? Get rid of Dave Courtney and his little band of men. So the very next day... Uh, I'm now being called a celebrity gangster. What the fuck that is, mm -hmm. I really do not know, yeah? Contradictory terms. It's like saying police intelligence, yeah? The two words don't go. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just don't go. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you got that. It's and, like uh, Pablo Escobar was always low-key. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But now I'm now doing not get a load of me. Yeah. So I just really got it wrong. Cray Twin Connection destroyed me. So I went to every club I had a dormant and went, look, sat Dave Courtney in his dorm and otherwise you won't have a license for a fucking television you dickhead so boom, and, and, and the magazines that I was working for they went to the editor and going you can't glamorise crime sack him yeah uh, the television companies I was working for they went we're not having him on telly you know sack him and it's yeah. the police just destroyed my lap <sighs> it just shut me down yeah what was what was your relationship with the craze then just going just jumping back a bit you mentioned the craze um, funeral well i was running all the doors yeah they were the craze twins yeah mm -hmm. and they asked to come and see me mm -hmm. for me to come and see them mm -hmm. and I, I was um living with the jamaican lady who was a rapper she had an identical twin sister and they wrote a record about the two cray twins themselves yeah. and the record was called they took the rap and they were rappers <laughs> and so they said you know I said, I made the record, and they went, well, if you're going to make a lot of money from that record, boy, yeah. you better come and see me. I heard you're <laughs> running things out there. You better come and see me. So I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> so I then go to see Ronnie and, uh, and Broadmoor and Reggie. And Broadmoor, is that like the mental prison? Yeah, it's a mental prison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Charlie became my friend, a lot of close, close friends. Mm -hmm. And so I then became their legs and arms for the last 20 years I was in prison. Right. So what kind of stuff did they ask you to do then? Everything, you know, everything mm. that you would imagine the creator is asking me to do, I did whatever they would have asked me to. Yeah. At the time, being a young, easily impressed mm -hmm. fella, yeah, mm -hmm. I went yes, yes, yes to all the things they asked me to. So right, you know, everything that you can imagine them mm -hmm. asking me to, I would, I would do. Mm -hmm. I, I then became aware that. Um, that they were a spent force mm. living on reputation. Yeah. And the real characters were nowhere near what you thought of in the myth. They were out the limelight. And 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 the actual calibre of person wasn't what you wanted it to be. Nothing or no one is as big as a myth. Yeah, mm -hmm. not John Wayne, not Al Capone, not Dave Courtney, not Ronnie Cray. No one is as big as a myth. Yeah. yeah. And uh but I was in it, I was getting on great because they were associates now of mine. So mm -hmm. it was opening an awful lot of doors until the end. And then at the end of it, it, it became the thing that shut all the doors. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they weren't running around showing off that they were both actual gays or mm -hmm. they were both completely skint. That all, most of what they said was a lie. It was just a romantic myth. The only reason they had stayed mythical characters is because mm -hmm. they'd been locked up for so long. Had they been let out, people would have met them and known them and gone, oh, they yeah, not that, you know. Yeah, still now in London, the talks about them and tours and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, great. And and, and they made it um, acceptable for mm -hmm. people like myself to earn money out of your criminal past. Yeah. But once I'd gone all over the telly and the newspapers as a celebrity gangster, <laughs> huh, I needed to do something very public to prove that I'm not. Yeah. That I couldn't do fuck all. I couldn't mm. jump out of my car and go bang to the geezer in the car behind because everyone in England was going, that's Dave Courtney, I know him, I see him on the telly. Well, I was fucked, I was fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was a debt collector. I could no longer kick a door down, run in, frame about and get the money. Because yeah. he can go, it was Dave Courtney, I know him. <laughs> seen him on the telly, so I'll get nicked and go to prison, I'm fucked. So I quickly needed to 
just as publicly as the creator in general, do something that took me out of the limelight. So I wrote that book, mm. Stop the Ride, I Want to Get Off. Dave's got nine books out now, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. You've, you've described all this time so far. But have you got to this point in your life without doing any prison time? No, I've done a few. I've done quite a few prison, but I've done more. All of my, not all. I've done some little sentences. Yeah, but I'm famous for actually getting not guilty. I've had twenty-one not guilty. Teflon Don style. I defend myself. All right. I couldn't get my head round paying someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> paying someone. 150 grand yeah. to stick up for me in court when I can argue better for myself yeah. and if he don't argue well enough for me I go to prison right I'm not doing that I'll argue and for me thank out. you that worked every out every time yeah. every time yeah so what was the first time you had to do that what were you charged with oh, I don't know I, just, I would always sit there and defend me I can't, uh, stupid things you know yeah. calf every, anything anything I've yeah. been done for 5 million pounds worth of cocaine importation murder <sighs> Attempted murder, grievous bodily harm, uh, assault, um, a million different things. A million different so what, things. So, what was the murder beef then? There's no beef to me, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> and you beat that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, have you got any stories from your time inside? God, I could, listen, listen I, could, I could sit here and Ratting off stories, William, my friend. Yeah. You're going to have to narrow that down because every single day of my life... You were probably destroyed. running it inside, I imagine. Was, I'm not me. I'm not silly enough to believe for one second Yeah, I am scary. The scary thing about me is my telephone. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what trouble I'm in, what, what, what part of the country, what part yeah. of the world. If you let me get to my phone, yeah, I will fuck you, mate. You've got your army right there. Huh? Yeah. It's not yeah. me, and then what? I'm a sixty-year-old fat bloke. Yeah, but if you let me get to there, I'll fuck you. Whether yeah. you be Russian, Indian, Pakistani, Polish, mm -hmm. Albanian, yeah. Have you bumped any heads with the horror mafias? Of course I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bumped heads enough to know that if I fell out with them, I'm going to come second. So they're all now my friends, every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, you know, they have a completely different level of crime and violence mm. than, than people in England. I'm yep. afraid um, human life is, is held at different importance mm -hmm. in different countries of the world. Yeah. yeah. In England, it's held as maximum importance. But in Kosovo or Moscow or Kingston, mm. Jamaica or Bosnia, Human life or Afghanistan means that. Yeah, yeah. Well, where I was at in Arizona prison, they killed for fifty dollars worth of heroin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I saw you got run off the road or something. Is there a story behind that? There is a story behind that. I am. Um, I've paid policemen all my life, and a certain policeman that I'd paid for for fifteen, twenty years mm -hmm. actually got caught. He actually got caught with yeah. me. And um, they filmed him, filmed me and him up the top of the road talking. And when they actually arrested us, he went, no, I'm, Dave's not paying me. I'm paying him. And I was like, really? <laughs> but but I, I'd bugged myself. Yeah. I'd bugged myself. So yeah. I'd take the whole conversation. <laughs> so when he actually said that, they, I then went, okay, well, there's a the tape. So they can either now, this is their decision. Yeah. Put him in prison and let me come out the hero Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me come out the hero, write a couple of books about it. All of the people that had arrested, there's going to be fucking uh, criminal compensation paid, mm -hmm. you know, look, look, look bad. Or pretend that they believe him. Mm -hmm. Call me a grass for eight months and hope that someone shoots me before it gets to court. Wow. So that's exactly what they did. But my yeah. biggest day is I went to court. Mm -hmm. I got not guilty at the Old Bailey and, my, and the couple went to prison. <laughs> I still bang one off over that. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if I, if I ever can't get an eye on, I'll think of that. I'll think of the women. I, my biggest day. Hear me. I went to court dressed as a court jester. I saw that. The jester you know, picture, yeah. I had some photos in, but it's on television. I went into court dressed as a court jester and pinged the copper out. Knocked him spark out in court. Right? On television. Stop it, because I'm getting a little semi hard on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. It's going. <laughs> yeah, so, and then after that, when I got not guilty, yeah, um, I then took the police to court mm -hmm. and went, you know, I'm nicking you for attempted murder mm -hmm. because you have had for eight months a tape recording of me paying him. 
Mm. But you're allowed in the newspapers, if not allowed, you put it in the papers, I might be a grass. Had that been believed, I would have been shot. So I'm saying, you tried to get me shot. Yeah. And I'll accept any excuse other, I'll accept any excuse. Can mm. you please tell me, seeing as you had the tape, why you put it in the paper that I might be an informant? Yeah. Because I'm saying you tried to get me killed, mm -hmm. and I'll accept any excuse you give me. But you had the tape knowing I wasn't, mm -hmm. and you've carried on for eight months saying it in the paper. I'll accept any excuse. Well, they didn't know then what to do. Yeah. So all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. um, and, and luckily for them, they, they said there was an unmarked police car following me. A car come up the M M4, and uh, what they call it? It's a police move. Any any criminal wants to kill another criminal, he's not going to go and do a pit manoeuvre on him on the M4 while he's on camera. He's shooting me. My doors are open. Have a look. It's easy. Yeah. That's a police thing. They make videos of it. There's old programs on the TV mm -hmm. of where they go ping. Right? Anyway, they ping me on the motorway in the middle of the night, but I didn't die. I was in a coma for five weeks. I was in hospital for eight months, but I didn't die. When I came out, wow. when I came out, I then said, give me the video of, I want you to check this out. Check this out on the old computer thing, yeah? It was the only day, they said, yeah. in its history that the M2 and the A2 wasn't being filmed. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, luckily, they said that the car behind me was an unmarked police car mm. that took eight witness statements. But since then, because I was in the coma and I thought I was dead, the witness statements have been lost. And would you please tell Mr. Courtney that in an office environment, things do get lost. Right. The two policemen can no longer be questioned or stand up in court because they're now in a different department and there's an ongoing investigation about me, so you can't question them. <laughs> it is a police camera that, that is filming you, filming you. It's not council, yeah. it's a police camera. So everything that I needed to prove my case, mm. they didn't, didn't give me. So I then said, well, I'm taking you to court for mm. attempted murder. Yeah. You've said that about me and you try I'm saying you tried to get me killed. Yeah. I'll accept any other excuse. Mm -hmm. And so what they did do is run me over. Yeah. I can't actually prove that because they won't give me the proof to show you. Mm -hmm. That's funny. But there it is. Yeah. I took it to the Royal Court of Justice. Mm -hmm. I paid my four hundred and eighty quid to take him to court. I've got the thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and in, in the law book it says if they don't answer that if they don't answer that, mm -hmm. um Accusation, that's a, a sign of guilt. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for them to answer it. And what they've done is run me over. <laughs> Bastards. Right, so. Who's the biggest mafia in the world then? The, um, the police. Not without any shadow of a doubt. <laughs> uh, it, it's the ones that runs the newspaper because they can convince you. Yeah. Um, you know, they can change and make these laws. And because they're thinking mm -hmm. long term. Yeah. You know, the chief of police uh, resigned the day before he went to court. Yeah. Yeah, but it weren't in the paper. Mm -hmm. I actually got not guilty and the couple went to prison for being a grass. They didn't report it. Mm -hmm. But on the way to court, they was going, here's Dave Courtney, here's his name, here's his address, here's his photo. They're saying he's a grass. Right? Go get him. Right, right, right. So yeah. they can actually convince a whole country that there's a country over there mm -hmm. with weapons of mass destruction and justify themselves to go and blow it up. A whole country, <laughs> and then go. Oh, sorry, there weren't none. <laughs> so actually, making one or two people look bad, yeah, is quite easy for them. And once yeah. they have the control over that little thing in the corner of the room, mm -hmm. the computer and the telly, and they've now made it mm -hmm. illegal to actually give a true portrayal of Dave Courtney because you cannot glamorise crime. Yeah. So with all my books, they're going. Don't give it to me, Dave, because I'm not allowed by law to say mm -hmm. it's a good book. Yeah. I'm not allowed to. I can see it. It's a good book. I read his books and I sent them to my mate Wildman in prison in America. Rave scene stories, everything, just blow your mind. Yeah. So that was a time when you were facing death. Yeah. Well, the other times when you've been had the fear that you were going to die, you were close to yeah, death. Yeah, I've been but shot. What was the story oh. behind you getting shot? Um, I was looking after someone that somebody else wanted to kill. Mm. And while... I was looking after him. I was the scariest person. Mm. So they shot me first. Right. Fuck all to do with me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with me. Right. Standing outside the pub in Peckham and had I known. Yeah. 
No, this is what's better. Shooting someone is not as easy as it is on telly. It's hard getting someone, even though you're a whole person. There's not a watermelon explosion head. No, 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 and it really hurts. There's none of that. <laughs> a, I'm only slow you down, you go with it. None of that, brother. It really hurts. And a geezer pulled up in a yellow me- Escort Mexico. I don't know if you remember that. No, don't. No, Escort Mexico, anyway. I'm older than you. <laughs> pulled out and he went, Dave, Dave Courtney. I went, yeah. And I walked right down to him. Had he tried to get me oh. from the car, he wouldn't have got me. But I walked right down to the actual window of the car. Mm. And as I leant down to go, what, mate? I see him pulling it out. Now, they're, they're in real life, yeah. things go slow motion, yeah? yeah? If you're about to die, things go slow motion. You mm-hmm. pick up every fucking detail. When the SWAT team raided me, I saw the guns, yeah. Yeah, of course, motion. you know what I mean? You can zoom mm-hmm. in, you can see him on the roof. Yeah. Yeah, you can see him sweating on the roof. Yeah. Oh, wow, you're on it, yeah? <laughs> anyway, as I went, yeah, mate, on the way down, I can see him pulling the gun out of his thing. I'm like, oh, fucking, what's a dickhead I am. I walked right down to the window yeah. and went, ta-da! And then go, boom. All it took was this. I went like that, he went, shot me in the leg there. Oh. and blew me in quite in the road yeah. there, right? but in my eyes because it's in slow motion they've gone like that yeah. I went oh fuck me I'm going to get it in the head I'm not going mm-hmm. right, cool now oh no I'm mm. going to get it in the heart oh, oh not a stomach shot you see that on telly here you'll die like that mm-hmm. you can shoot me in the bollocks right and I thought and he's just gone down to shoot me in the leg on purpose Yeah. and I thought fuck jump over the car Dave did you think the thing but I didn't know what else to think so as I jumped both feet are off the floor yeah went bang caught my leg my leg spanned me upside down I come down and landed on my face yeah but my leg just went bang you know and um, that's me getting shot how long did that take then to get get you walking out again I've had a lot more worse injuries than that but like, at the yeah. time that was you know that was worrying me when I woke up I'd landed on my head yeah. And I was all blown up, like going, oh, what done, what done. I didn't even see that until the ambulance bloke come out with like a an inflatable Wellington boot and they go and put your leg in it and go, <laughs> and it pumps your leg up. And all of a sudden my foot's over that way. I'm like, fuck. I try to put it back and I see these two white bones going like that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so what's the worst injury you've had? Um, I've had my nose bit off that. Bit off? I've had all of that off of my nose. Someone lying on top of me and, and just go like that. And for about 30 seconds, I had to go. Uh, uh, uh. And it's like an electric shock. You know, when you get electric shock off the, off the door of the fridge, you actually go, nah, fuck. <laughs> it was like that on my face for half a minute. Yeah. He was just holding me and we had a fight. And he was holding my hands and he was on top of me like that. And he went, sorry, Dave. I went, sorry, Dave. And he just went. <laughs> And because his teeth was on my, I'm getting goose pimples telling you the fact. Because his teeth was on the bone of my nose, like that. Yeah. It was just hurting me, and my mouth being up with blood. And I thought, I'm going to gurgle to death, I'm going to die, right? Yeah. I've got to pull it out. So as I pulled my nose away from him, like that, right? His teeth met, it come off the bone, and went, <coughs> and all of that bit there. <sighs> So yeah, all of that bit there went in his mouth and it, yeah. and it ripped. It sounded like a newspaper when you go, <laughs> ripped and he went, Phew. I thought, that's my trumpet. <laughs> it's, actually my, it's actually my trumpet. Like, wow, and the big breath in um, crucified me like when you eat ice cream. Like, yeah, yeah, because I, I, was, I didn't know, but there's just a hole in my face. Oh, yeah. right? The pain of it got my hand out of his hand and as hard as I could, leaning against the floor, mm-hmm. with my finger like that, as hard as I could, I pushed into his eye yep. and went like that as much as I could. Eye, yeah. And I took him off me, kept my hand straight, yeah. with my finger pointed like that, and his eye come out on two little like long bits, yeah, oh. about that far. And I'm looking at it and the God's honest truth, not that I'm a nutter, but this is the God's honest truth. The very first yeah. thought I had when his eye come out, was I wonder if you can actually look behind him or look like, like that. that's my very first you know what I mean I don't know I went into other things because I was in pain and all that but my very first one was I wonder if you can go oh yeah I'll see ya you got to I was just my fault and um, he got up and then he just he went back get off me and he stood up and then I got up but I could see double 
really, really clearly. I mean, you know, it's like if you squeeze, if you bang your nose or squeeze a spot on your nose, your ears, yeah. your eyes water. Yeah. You want to try a fucking 18 stone skinhead hanging off the end of it, it fucking hurts. And I've got, just got a big hole in my face going, yeah, all that but my nose is gone. And I can see everyone that's watching it going, I'm thinking, fucking <gasps> hell. And I can see this other geezer going, and I see him perfectly clear, mm. but he was there was two of them. But it was perfectly clear. It weren't fuzzy around the edge. Yeah. There was two, like twins. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know what one to get because mm. water was pouring out of my eyes. And I was like, wow, I don't know what one's... Yeah. And why was he mad at you in the first place? Uh, it was it was a... He had a team of doormen and I had a team of doormen. Okay. And it was over contracts and it ended up with his doorman kept bumping into my doorman mm. and people were getting stabbed and done and all that just for no other reason than they were working for me and and him. And it ended up that, um, you know, we're coming off, are you? Yeah. Stop all it. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. And uh, it was a bit bigger than me. And my plan was, because I can't I'll use a knuckle duster. There's no wouldn't anyone without one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I do it my mum, I'll, I'll use it. You know, I ain't gonna break my knuckle on some fucking dickhead, right? <laughs> and um, I was just gonna, at uh, first sight, I was gonna run over and go bang, 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 bang. But we all got stopped on the way to this pub. Yeah. We was in in the pub garden, he's waiting for me. And um, I said, well, you gotta check your weapons. I'm like, fuck what do you? You're just sitting there watching the fight. Mm. You know, they're not telling me what I can and can't use in it. Mm. Like, you're just, he went, no, we can't, he's out there waiting for you. Mm. You can't bring no weapons. Well, I, I, I'm a knuckle duster man. You understand know what I mean? I'm <laughs> like, fuck, I can't do that. So I'm like, losing my knuckle before I went out there was wrong. And when I went out there, he was big. He was oiled up. Mm. He had a box on a rugby box. Yeah. And it's just like, Ugh. and I was a bit, a bit quicker than him. I was going mm -hmm. ping, 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 ping. And because I'm a dickhead, because I'm a fucking dickhead. I had brand new shoes on, a little bit of aftershave, nice work. You know, you know, I looked like I was going to a club. Right? <laughs> there was all people waiting there watching. I looked and I smelt nice. Um, brand new shoes. Uh, quarter, I wear quarter lines on my shoes. Yeah, you know. The, yeah. <laughs> and I was going ping, 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 and I was like, I was fucking, I was winning. So I thought, and all of a sudden he caught me. And when we both sort of went to go and make our stance and to do some shoving mm -hmm. I was just going across the floor like strictly come dancing he was walking forward and I couldn't get no grip I was just <laughs> sliding brand new shoes yeah smelling a fucking curos or fucking <laughs> brute or some fucking thing and he's just sl sliding me around not like fucking Torvin and Dean and I'm like oh fuck no and all of a sudden I've hit something and fell over and he's fell on top of me and he's got my hands and he just fell on top of me so yeah. we're just going ah, 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 and then he went sorry Sorry. <laughs> and, it, and it bit my nose off. So the guy you sparked out in the courtroom, the cop, didn't they charge you for that then? Didn't you get an extra case for that? No, fuck all. No, no. Right in the I was still yeah, in front yeah, of the yeah, church yeah. and everything. Stop it because I'm getting hard on again. Stop. <laughs> it's on Colton TV. Have a look. And I turned up to court with 40 of my friends, all in, dressed in black and all that. Yeah. Color. Yeah. And, and since I, after that, I, I've been took out to Sicily to go and meet the Mafia, to go and have conversations with them in their in their own private villa. Wow. Virgin arranged it for me. What was that like then? Yeah, yeah mental. And I met fucking Berlusconi. Yeah. yeah. And I met all of them and he went, and they, don't forget, they're talking in like pigeon English. Mm. So it's sexy. <laughs> he went, please don't talk to me about gangster. Tell me about the day you dress like a cunt. <laughs> Meaning in my... Just uh, that, eh? He goes, and you went to court and I punched the policeman in the face and I said, oh, fuck you. He said <laughs> to the press, he went, tell me that day. He said, because there was an unwritten rule book about going to court. Yeah. And everyone in the world knows it. And that is, do not bring all your friends. <laughs> all right? Wear a nice suit. And it's yes, sir, no, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And a letter from someone that's known you 20 years saying you're a nice bloke. They're the fucking yeah. rules of going to call. Yeah. Whoever. The only people that do not abide by them rules mm -hmm. is the Costa Nostra because they already know I'm John Gotti. It's a waste yeah. of my time coming in here trying <laughs> to be fucking nice, uh, telling you I've got a letter from someone. It's a waste of my time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm John Gotti. I'm, I'm, I'm a mafia boss. Mm -hmm. So they're the only people that don't run with that book. Yeah. He went, but you. You dress like that, 
Brought 40 of your mates to court, punched a cop in the face and went, fuck you, wouldn't you tell me that day? Because the only person that does that is us, you cunt. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's done me good stead. Yeah. They would have give you a life sentence in America, probably. So yeah. what what do you think of John Gotti and Sammy the Bull? Because Sammy the Bull was my competition in the ecstasy market in America, in Arizona. Yeah. Well, I think what everyone should think of Sammy the Bull, yeah. Yeah. He went to the weddings, so he should have took the funerals better than he did, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I can see, I've known a million people do it. Yeah. And out there, the um, the reward for doing it mm -hmm. almost makes it right. Yeah, if you would rather go to prison for 999 years mm -hmm. or do four years mm -hmm. and I'll let you out. Yeah. Yeah, just cross up your best mates, your brother, your dad, your cousin, your mm -hmm. wife, your kids, and all that, and I think, yeah. So, yeah, and I'll give you a fucking cut of underground. So you, no, I'm, 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 um, condoning it, but you know you can see it. You know when your wife's going, kids, what? Yeah. And he was able to set up an ecstasy ring while in witness protection. Yeah. Can you believe that? Are you rich then? So no, Sammy the Bull. No, you rich. No, no, the cops took everything. If you're stupid enough to be rich well, and committing crimes... You've been nicked and they've took you. What did you get? Yeah, yeah. What did you get? Running ecstasy ring, I put importing, people importing. Yeah. Throwing raves like you. Had the house locked down, got my own bouncers, and that was it then, just selling the pills. As well as the water. Yeah, mental, isn't it? The water. Yeah, the water, yeah. Mental, <laughs> this was the Sonoran Desert. Yeah, yeah. Can imagine how thirsty they are in the Sonoran Desert. Almost Even at 50, 50 cent, you know, he made his money from water, you know that? Yeah, did he? He made more money from sending his own brand of water than yeah. he did from Munich. It was almost 50 degree heat in Arizona. So we'd do desert raves, we'd have warehouse parties, police would come, fire department would come, all they cared about was alcohol. That's right. Yeah. Any alcohol, we're going to close it down. Everyone's on pills. They didn't, they didn't pay attention to that. As he... <laughs> <laughs> so where are you going next then with your career? Um, I've now been limited because they've they've definitely shut it down for Dave Courtney. Yeah. So, um, but people can no longer put me in a film like Guy Ritchie put based Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels on myself. Really? Vinnie Jones plays me. Yeah, they like that character. Yeah. You do, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He plays me, yeah. and most of them stories the two shotguns, the beating the bloke up in a sunbed, mm -hmm. the doing the geezer in the car door and all that they're all true they're real yeah. stories about myself they're legendary mm -hmm. in the naughty boy world it's when we were dormant yeah yeah they're all true stories but he gave me the part of brick top mm -hmm. but then once he's actually started advertising it the powers that be have went you can't do it turn dave courtney into a fucking movie star profiting from crimes yeah, we're actually trying to put him in prison you're trying yeah. to get him on richard and judy <laughs> knock it on the fucking head or we won't we won't pay for the film so he yeah. went look Dave I'm really sorry but I can't put you in the film I said okay don't mm -hmm. he then done the audition for Snatch mm. in my back garden using all my friends <laughs> I've got the photograph for it you can prove it me and Guy Ritchie in my back garden using all my mates for Snatch yeah my friends club in in Streatham where they had the mm -hmm. punch up and all that Brad Pitt stayed here he stayed wow. here for two nights yeah 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 and, and he went to me what the fuck is a jelly deal man <laughs> Explain to me what the fuck you do with a joke. You put that in your mouth. Put that in your fucking mouth. You know, that's really funny. And loved all this. Just went, wow. Or do I go back to an hotel room? Yeah. yeah. They were my favourite two movies yeah. of his. What about these Rise of the Foot Soldier Boys? Were you involved with them? Saw that movie. Yeah, no, I wasn't, no. Wasn't. I, I know the... I know the people that are arrested Worms and Steel for the... Mm -hmm. For the Essex Range Rover murders. Yeah. And I cannot prove this to you, mm -hmm. but I will give you a fact. Yeah. I'm not saying they'd fuck all to do with it. Yeah. At all. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you this they are in prison for pulling the trigger and killing them other guys, yeah? Okay. They didn't do that. Mm. I'm not saying they weren't there. Yeah. I'm not saying that, right? But what they're in prison for, pulling the trigger, Mm -hmm. and um, killing all them, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Tucker and Ralph and all that. They didn't do that. Yeah. I, I, I know that. Yeah. I won't ask how you know that, but I believe you. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not saying they didn't know about yeah, it. Yeah. They weren't there watching it happen. I'm just saying they yeah. didn't do that. Yeah. But that's what they're in prison for. Yeah. Uh, the man who done that is someone called Terry Stone. He's another, I'm afraid he's a victim of um, needing to actually, actually do that with Dave Courtney. He was mm -hmm. a very good friend of mine. We've, we've worked together for 20 odd years. I, I made him star in my film. And then he met all these people, mm -hmm. started making films yourself. And then they said to him, mm -hmm. if you help or employ Dave Courtney, yeah. or have him wrap around you, the Cray twin geezer, yeah, yeah, the one that just put the copper in prison and beat him up dressed as a clown, yeah, you know the bloke, <laughs> yeah? Right, if you want to help him and be a fucking, make him into a movie star, yeah. you ain't going to get on, mate. So he's another one that had to go and talk to me. So he's never, he's never, done a film about me since but mm -hmm. there's little things like he made the Bronson film mm -hmm. now Charlie Bronson prostitutes himself for a bit of publicity not realising in two years time when he was going to be coming up for parole mm -hmm. that this man said do you want me to make a film so he went yeah so they've made the film and brought it out two weeks before he said can I get parole I've changed they brought out the film yeah. that made him look the nuttiest fucking cunt <laughs> you've ever fucking seen in your life, definitely in the prison system. Yeah. Right. And they showed the whole world it, and then went, right, off you go. And 14 days later, he went, oh, can I get that out of him? Terry made that film. Uh, the other films are where Worms and, and Steel were going, we never killed him. That's the police not knowing who did and blaming us for that. We've got an appeal. We've actually got an appeal in saying we didn't do it. Terry made two films proving that they did. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and, and put, brought them out in the Rise of the Foot Soldier and all that. Yeah. I'm not saying anything about him. I'm just saying, you know, if there's someone went to you, you're, you're, I'm going to make you fucking skint and fuck up your whole company. <laughs> yeah, you'd much rather go, I'll, I'll help you as well. You'd much rather do that. Yeah. Yeah. But because there's so many people at the, at the moment in the country that want to be actors and they want to be famous and they want to be in movies, mm -hmm. you know, he's got them queuing up, and so did I have when I made my first films, like Hell to Pay and all that. He's got them queuing up to pay you to be mm -hmm. in the film. How many films have you been in? Oh, fuck me, I don't know, loads. Can you travel overseas with your criminal record? Yeah, of course, yeah. They won't, let me, in. They won't let me in anywhere. You haven't got a criminal record? No, I've got not guilty. You beat them all, all not of them. Guilties, yeah. Not all, single... not all. The only one that got me was my wife nicked me for assaulting her. Okay. And they put me in prison for that. Yeah. And uh, I've been in prison when I was 20. Mm -hmm. There's a photograph over there of me coming out of prison when I was 21. Yeah. Um, is that, for is that attempted trouble, murder. That attempted murder, yeah, yeah. Grab it. Yes. Attempted murder Thanks. and causing an afraid. There's a young Dave Cooney there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the eyes, isn't it? It's in the eyes that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but like I said, well, like I said at the beginning, you only learn from you only learn from bad things. Good yeah. things happen to you. You don't learn from. And that little eighteen months, eighteen months I done in prison. Then I got three years, six months. I done eighteen months. What I learned in that eighteen months mm -hmm. kept me out of prison for the next forty years. What did you learn? Uh, well, what you learn is this. People are under the illusion mm -hmm. that you go to prison and learn how to do all different crimes. Mm -hmm. That's absolute fucking shit. Because mm -hmm. the only people you're going to meet in prison are everyone that got caught. <laughs> all you're going to meet in there are people that are no fucking good at it. <laughs> Hear me with this. All you're going to meet is people that got captured. You're going to meet no fucking criminal geniuses <laughs> whatsoever because everyone in there is fucking... And then the longest sentence you do, I'm doing 14 years. God, you're going to have to be a proper geezer. I'm doing 25 <laughs> years. Fuck me, you got to be a fucking proper. Fuck, what the fuck are you on? All you're going to learn is how not to do it. Yeah. Because every cunt in there got caught. So you are going to learn how not to do it. All he's going to walk around and say every day on his exercise ride for his next 25 years is, oh, the gloves. The thing, the dog, the fucking <laughs> DNA. All right. So you're going to learn how not to do it from all these fucking pricks that fucking got caught at it. All going to tell you that they're fucking criminal, criminal masterminds. Yeah. And you know, stop it. 
Right, so after a year, you only need a year, whatever crime you've done. You only need a year in prison to learn your lesson and come out and go, oh, I don't want to be a criminal no more. You only need a year. Mm -hmm. After doing 20 years, because right, your crime was bad, you come out, your wife's left you, your wife's left you, you've got no job anymore. Right? You have to be a criminal or just live. Yeah? But after a year, you can still salvage everything. That would actually teach you the lessons you need to learn. Yeah. And you can get away with it. But, like, I learned enough in that year on how not to do it. And then when you come out of prison after that year, you know how fucking not to do that, mm. how not to do that, because you've been locked up with a thousand people who mm. couldn't do it properly. Yeah. And so all you've learned is how not to do it. No one's taught you any fucking criminal mastermind secret. All mm. you've learned is from cunts that got caught, <laughs> me being one. Right? So if then you want to come out of prison and you want to carry on in that world, yeah. What you have got up in there is, I know how not to do it. You've logged all the mistakes. Right. Yeah. So I'll do it like this because that's got to be the way to do it. Yeah. That's why you yeah. come out more intelligent. You ain't learnt no fucking, <laughs> fucking thing from... He's doing 30 years. Go, he's got to be a genius. He's just got to be a proper geezer. <laughs> you made me realise something with that because in prison, where I was housed anyway, the guys with the biggest sentences, they were like, at the most respect. Of course. Well, the from, fucking from, from, stupid from, 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 from the, way, the, way, the way you phrased it, they're the biggest losers. And they? <laughs> yeah, and all they've got is people like me and you going, you've got 35 years. You've got to be a proper, a proper dude. <laughs> yeah. I've only got three years. Oh, what a wanker you are. <laughs> what a wanker you are. You'll be home in 18 months, you tosser. I've got 35 years. I'm going, poor, proper bloke. <laughs> really? I don't, well, I don't know. Call me old fashioned, but I just. <laughs> so, was this back when they were still slopping out the shit and stuff in prisons when you were in there in the beginning? There was no fucking toilets and all that, no phones, no. No fucking. Listen, let, let me tell you something. Anyone that goes to prison then. Yeah. When you go, well, I ain't going to shit in front of anyone else, mm -hmm. you was eating prison food. When you wanted to go shit, you quickly sat down and had a shit because. You couldn't hold that all night and do it in the morning. So you had yeah. three pots of shit in your room, the bunk bed and the single bed, right? Yeah. Right. And and, and, and at the beginning, in front of anyone, you're sitting on this little pot going, you might have felt embarrassed. But after the second week and the third week and the fourth week and the ninth week and the 18th week, you can actually play Monopoly. I'll have that. I'll get my own. Yeah. Right. Or shit into a sock, wipe your bum on the sock and throw it out the window. Mm -hmm. Or... That might sound odd, or have three piles of shit under your fucking bed all night long till the morning. I said, yeah, yeah, just keep it fucking real there. There was no fucking cameras anywhere. It was, there was no tape recording when you got nicked. It was one point of view. So they just opened the door at three in the morning, mm -hmm. ran in, smashed fuck out of you, yeah. and locked the door again. And there's nothing you could do about it. It's no good going, uh, no a prison officer wouldn't do that. Yeah. Did you have to weaponize your shit at any point? Of like course, Bronson of course, did. of course you did. Of course <laughs> you fucking did. You know what I mean? What chance did you have that? A lot of people just took all their clothes off, rubbed human shit all over them, right? So if they did run in, you can't do anything to me because I'm scrubbing this shit and that defended them. Yeah. Actually made them go, he's now mental and mad and well, let's take away his prison sentence, give it a HMP mm. and keep me in here for 20 years. But he never got beat up anymore, so he'd have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was all sorts of it's a different world at the time. Did you see anyone get killed in there? Uh, I've never seen anyone get killed. I've seen a few people kill themselves. I've never yeah. seen anyone get raped either, but I know that's different in America. Yeah. It's so common in America you've got to go to a rape class in prison to get taught how not to get raped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep your legs yeah. shut. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the food like back then? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> right now, if anyone wants to go and check this up on Google it yeah. and, and check her, the prison service spend more money per man, per prisoner, than the National Health do per patient. Right? So you get better food in prison yeah. now yeah. than you do in hospital. How much does it cost to house a prison in this country these days? You know. Well, they, listen, they'd actually tell you some stupid amount, like 140 grand a year. Okay. How the fuck that they work that out? I don't know, but they're paying for this, 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 this. Right, because you're not eating 140 grand. There's three of you living in a fucking big 
in a thing as big as my toilet. Yeah. But I've heard people now go, can I have ringing a bell to the governor? <laughs> and don't forget, I've had all that living and shit and all that, you know, the yeah. lights out at four o'clock and maggots in your food and all that, all, all sorts of things. Yeah. Getting beat up and no one does anything. Right, and I'm going, he hit me. And he go, no, I never. And in front of the governor go, <laughs> hit me. <laughs> I go, do you? And he go, what? I'm bleeding. He just hit No, never. <laughs> okay. Right, right, I've had all that. And now I've got them buzzing on a thing. Can I have a double plug so I can plug my PlayStation in <laughs> with my jelly? And then I'm like, really? <laughs> really? You know, like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Right, and all the screws have to go to you. Morning, Mr. Courtney, because they're on camera with a fucking microphone on it. Yeah. And you'll go, morning, sir. Uh, any chance of, uh, no, no, no. Fuck. <laughs> I've done things like this. I, fucked him. I was in the special unit. Mm. Go and check that up on the old website thing. With, with, with nut nuts, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The special unit is supposed yeah. to be in Belmarsh, the most maximum secure prison for the criminally minded and people that have financially got the resources to get out and all that. Yeah. And they just film you 24 hours a day. And then they go, did you know that rapists only went once a night and armed robbers went three times a night? Why does Dave have two sausages every morning for breakfast and he only ever eats one? <laughs> and like, oh, fucking shit. They fucking work it out and all that crap. They're just working it all out, right? And, and, um, I was going to fucking say that. Yeah, I was, I was in, what was I talking about? <laughs> Help special me. unit, special unit. Special unit, yes. Yeah, so I was in there with Charlie Bronson, um, Tony White from Brinks, Matt, um, Steele and... Home, Did you um, know Bronson before? No, 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 no. Listen, Bronson frightened the fucking life out of me, man. Listen, Did he? Like, listen to me. I then goes into prison, right? And all of a sudden I was going, Dave Corner's got Nick, Dave Corner's got Nick. And he's like running his own little domain of yeah. fame and all that at the moment and and the horrible thing about prisons it makes you feel forgot life's carrying on but you're mm, forgot mm. so if you can get yourself in the paper or anything like that it's most probably addictive to go and, and remember them you know what i mean so that yeah. might be what he's done to and and and, and hurting yourself but I don't, I don't know anyway i need to be of his funder and i'm in a special unit and he's in the cage underneath me and i'm just lying there going Wow, what have I done? Like, <laughs> five million pounds worth of cocaine. And like, what the fuck am I doing here? And I've heard him go, and so is the rest of the prison. He went, Courtney, Courtney, you can't. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought the only chance I've got is there might be someone else in here called Courtney. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Right? That is my, that's the only chance I've got. Right? <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, and all the, everyone else in the prison is going, fuck me, Bronson's stuck in court, what's happening all in the window? I'm like, fucking please, <laughs> fucking, and, and there's a God, really, really? <laughs> he went, I'm going to bite a fucking hole in your chest and suck the fucking life out of you, boy. <laughs> and I would say to anyone, don't be frightened of someone on the phone. Yeah, don't tell me, show me. No, I'm fucking, uh, yeah. it's my job bringing up people and getting debts back. Yeah. It's all fucking bloody and all that, bro. He fucking shit the fucking life out of me. The voice was out of a fucking horror film. It was out of a... I just like... Fucking stop it. Stop it. And the whole prison's going, God, this fucking... Bronson stuck in the corner. What are we going to do? And I'm like, fucking, I've got to think here. I'm fucking... I couldn't talk for a fucking shaking, right? Yeah. Ruin my wank. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ruin my wank, right? Yeah, so I've actually got in my best gangster South London voice. I'm up at the window and I'm like, mm. Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> Charlie? Charlie's Dave. <laughs> Dave? Dave Courtney, Charlie, Charlie Wiley's. <laughs> Love you. You know, fucking hell. Had someone said to me, Charlie Bronson's in solitary confinement. You have more chance of bumping into the Queen <laughs> than you do of ever fucking coming face to face with Charlie Bronson. Yeah. He's got 12 men every day just opening his fucking door to get dinner, putting his fucking shit in. You're never, ever, ever going to bump into him. Wow. Ever, Dave. And I've known that. 
I'd have gone, fuck off, you mug. Yeah, before I fucking come down and better you, you dick brain fucking cognate. You fuck, have I had on known that? But I didn't. I'm thinking I'm going to bump into him in the library or the church. On, on the bus to crawl. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. And his voice was just so not human. <laughs> and it was coming from like below in the bowels of the prison. Courtney. <laughs> like, oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, we become we became really good friends after that. And I had his wedding in my pub. Mm. Both of his weddings. Mm-hmm. Um I had the first dance with his wife. I had the reception in my pub with Tony Lambriano, Freddie Foreman, Charlie Richardson, yeah. Joe Paul, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Nash, they all, they was all there, you know, it was my, my booze and all that stuff. So yeah. We had the I've done the whole thing, but please believe me, if anybody's going to suck his cock, <laughs> I'll fucking shit myself. Not that I'd admit that. Well, no, I have admitted it. But not that I'd have admitted it then. Yeah? But like, I thought, I can't even hide it. I can't even hide it. I just went, Charlie. <laughs> hey. Do you think you'll ever get out? No. Oh. No, listen, listen. At the moment, they're using him. Yeah. As they did me, and as they have Ronnie Biggs, and as they have Kenny <coughs> Noy, as a deterrent to mm. anyone wanting to do that. Yeah. yeah. Kenny Noy killed a policeman once. Right. Yeah. And whether they had to go and fit him up for fucking the M25 murder afterwards and give him 30 years. Yeah. yeah. And Ronnie Biggs being the one that got away and all that, they're not mm. going to have him love for that. And the Cray twins getting all their glory, they will all die in prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And. If you want to start going fucking pulling slates off the roof and knocking the governors out and all that, like Charlie Bronson, mm-hmm. you will die in prison and they will fucking make sure that everyone knows you died in prison, you dopey cunt. That's what they say. Yeah. All the crazy twins you want to go and do their little hero worship, they all died in prison and we only give them 30 years. He done 40, he done 20. Mm-hmm. Right? Kenny and I killed a policeman and got not guilty. We caught him for the M25 murderer. Right. What's not common knowledge is it weren't actually even his knife that he fucking done. He took the knife off the other kids and killed him. Right. But that didn't come out of the paper. But if you want to go and check the fucking things, that is what happened. Yeah. yeah. The Ronnie Biggs, yeah, I got away. I lived in Brazil. We fucking brought him back and he died in prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're not having any lights at the end of the tunnel for any fucking criminal. Yeah. And Dave Courtney, yeah, dressed up as a clown, punched a cop in the mouth and got mm-hmm. not guilty. He thinks he's going to be an hero. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly the same. And Charlie Bronson, no, he's not going to come out of that thing. He yeah. might when he's 85. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he only got seven years. So he's gone in there for seven years yeah. and done 35. Oh, he's shit. gone in there for seven years yeah. and done 35. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the sharpest pencil in the box. That's a lot of disciplinary tickets right there. Right, cool. Yeah. Disciplinary ticket. That's what that's we a call fucking, That's a word, isn't it? <laughs> that is a fucking word up, mate. <laughs> What do you think about how the media portrays gangsters? Well, in reality, when law was different and there was the freedom of the press, yeah, the media portrayed gangsters exactly what gangsters were. Interesting, funny, gun-ho, mm. not give a fuck, kind of exciting people. That an awful lot of people would go, I want to be one. Yeah. So they changed the law and went, you can't glamorise crime. Mm-hmm. Right now, Virgin can publish my book, but they're not allowed to put a poster up saying Dave's got a new book out because the poster is glamorising crime. Yeah? Oh, bloody hell. Right, right. So, they, and on television, any any criminal that's used to, mm-hmm. they're going, it's live TV. Shut up, you fucking sap. Once you've been in the old Bailey talking for your life, yeah. and if you got a sentence wrong, you got 20 fucking years. Doing a bit of live TV where you can go, can't do it again, sorry. Sir. Means that to you. I had to fucking talk for three days and not get a word wrong, or I'd have got 20 years. So going on telly means fuck all to me, yeah. you fucking dickhead. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, totally. Right, yeah. So we get good at it. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be good at ad living when they go, you're nicked. You've got to turn around and go, Bleh, and pop up some fucking excuse where you're. So I can get away with it. Mm. Plead the fifth. So are you reformed, Dave? Yes. <laughs> yes. I have no longer got any criminal vein 
in my body. <laughs> Will you shut up? Because you're making me look like a dickhead. Uh, listen, forget him. I am no longer in the criminal fraternity. Um, fact, I am now I've got flags outside my house and big pictures of myself painted on the side of my house going, look at me, I'm no longer doing anything criminal, right? Yeah, you look But good. there is now a law called knowingly concerned and they've made that for people like myself, which means, because I'm now 60, in my long life, there is a lot of people that have helped me. Yeah. And if you was to knock on my door tonight mm -hmm. and go, Dave, it's me, yeah, I've just gone home and caught my wife with my fucking best friend. I've killed him. Get me out of the country. Help me. Yeah. Help me, Dave. And he's got holes in his body down to me. I've known him 30 years. Yeah. He went to prison, never crashed me up. Do I go, no, I'm now an author, and you've got to handle this one yourself. Sorry. You're bonded for life. All right. If I help him, mm -hmm. I'll go up here. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. Right. This, this will explain mm -hmm. the situation I'm in at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Twenty five years ago. Yeah. I was doing a show in Woolwich and this lady came to watch me and I thought she either hates my guts or whatever, she's just looking at me like that. Mm -hmm. No 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 stop stop. Let me rewind that one. Okay. Lady <laughs> All right. This man came to my house one day about eleven o'clock and Mr. Courtney, yeah. I have a chat with you, yeah, what's it about? He said, well, the truth is this. I've come down from Stoke. Yeah. Right. This man here done this, this, and this to my family. Mm. He lives around here. Mm -hmm. I am going to shoot him. Is he one of your gangsters? Because I do not want to cause a big war and shoot someone that's close to you, and then I've got you after me and all of that. Yeah. Is he one of yours? Mm -hmm. Or am I allowed to do what I feel as a man I should do to this person? Yeah. Right? I'm just giving you the respect you deserve. So I have to go, well, let me have a look, yeah? Mm. I've never seen him before in my life. Mm -hmm. You do what you've got to do, mate. Thank you. Right, boom. And left. Mm -hmm. Four years later, I'm doing a show in Woolwich. And this woman is sitting there with this woman, and she was sitting down she's looking at me, like not liking me. I did, oh, oh, oh. She went, and then in the interval, oh, before I ended, mm. she went to me, and there was all people coming up with signing books and all that. I went, you all right, baby? I'm not your cup of tea, are you? She went, listen, Mr. Courtney, went, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't want to like you before I come in here. I sort of find you quite funny, yeah? But I didn't want to like you. She went, my ex-husband, who's now dead, I went, yeah. She went, he fucking worshipped the ground you walked on. Mm. Laughed all the way through my fucking honeymoon at your book, all around the thing, all I heard was the stories you kept reading, and all that, right? She goes, but he got falsely accused of something once mm. and was murdered for it, which was found out later that it was nothing to do with him. But by the time they found out, it's too late, he's dead. Stop, stop. Uh, she goes, but he loved you. She goes, you live in Woolwich, we live in Woolwich. Did you ever know blah, 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 this person's name? And I can't say I do. She went, did you ever see him? And she showed me the same photo mm. that was the geezer that I said, yes, go and kill. Mm. Now, had now the law been different then, mm. I would have got 30 fucking years for that. Conspiracy. Because he was alive up until Dave Courtney said, nope, I don't know him. Yeah. So it was on my say so he died. Because he did say... If he's one of yours, I won't do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. No, how was that sweet? How was that gone like that? Yeah. Yeah? Because up until I said to Dave Courtney, mm -hmm. and I told him, yeah, and if he's one of yours, I, won't, I ain't going to fall out with you and have a big fucking war with a gangster and all that, yeah? Mm -hmm. But, and I went, no, I don't know him. So, boom. And she went, that's him. And as he did it, it's the same picture, and I remember it. I remember it. It fucking rocked me. Mm. It rocked me almost enough that I had to lean on something. Almost. I can't remember, but I know mm -hmm. it. Now you go over and hear we're in a car. Yeah. And you go, eh. San Francisco yeah, right, style. Right, oh, whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It rocked me. Yeah. And and he went to well, nowadays, yeah. If that actually happened and he got caught doing it and he went, Well, I'll just check with Dave Courtney first, mm -hmm. whether it was all right to do. He said, Yes, it was all right to do, so I killed him. If he'd have got caught for doing that murder, 
I would have got 30 years. Yeah. Because it, it, weren't, it weren't even happening until they checked with me first. And I went, yes, kill him. It, I didn't do that. It would have been a co-conspiracy. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's how the fucking law has changed yeah. since then. So like, and I will never, for as long as I've got a fucking hole in my ass, forget that woman going to me. And he loved you, mate. Mm -hmm. He just worshipped the fucking ground you walked a mile, man. But he got falsely accused of something murdered. And although he was found out to be not guilty of it later, it was too late, I lost my husband. But I had to come and have a look at you because yeah. he fucking thought you were the bollocks. This is the case that I've said kill. It's and I was great. like, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. So nowadays, if anyone ever said that to me again, which they haven't, mm -hmm. I'm going to kill so and so and so. I'm just checking with you. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'd go, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at <laughs> no, it. No yeah, you no fucking comment. do what you like. Because yeah. had that, had he got caught doing mm -hmm. it, had he got caught doing it, and they went, what happened? No, I've got a gun, I shot the guy. And I took my man and dad caught me. And I, I can't get away with that. Yeah. I would have had to do 25 years. Mm -hmm. So you've, they've, they've just changed all the laws where you're going, fuck. Mm -hmm. I was actually buzzing on the fact of, Fucking know how respectful is that coming out and checking on me? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm actually not like, getting off on it like a mm -hmm. fucking prick dickhead. Yeah. You know what I mean? The ego is the enemy when you're in that business, isn't it? Slightly. Yeah. And I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> Huge! Huge! Ooh. I actually think I'm really tall, long haired, and skinny. <laughs> we got about the same, huh, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's been really cool, man. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Pretty cool. Cheers, man. Cheers. Back to that head. <laughs> Keep it bald. All these fucking gel wearing faggots. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, it's not gel, Dave. It's wax. Fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. No, George Michael Quiff here. <laughs> Cheers. That was brilliant. Yeah. Really appreciate your time, man.